In today's video, we're going to perform the ultimate torture test between two drills, the Ryobi and the Milwaukee. All right, here we go. So I have to say, I have received a lot of pushback from you guys about the disparaging remarks and comments I have made about the Ryobi brand. And you know, it did, it did resonate with me a little bit because I, I, I thought about some of the comments that I read and, and the truth of the matter is that I have never owned a Ryobi tool and I've never purchased one because I've had this bias in my mind that they were always a lower end tool, a poor quality tool. And coming out of construction and, and my dad being a contractor, you know, quality tools and tools that were you know, made for professionals, that always really appeals to me. And I never considered that with a Ryobi. But many of you, again, have commented and said, hey, I've been using these things and they're actually really good. And they're at a good price point that they're probably, if I'm not mistaken, they probably the most popular tools at let's say our big box stores like Home Depot. It seems to me that they have more variety there and they certainly um, are front and center and it appears to me, you know, I see a lot of guys that are kind of homeowner type of tools that are really going to these because of the price points really appealing. So if you remember from our last drill test, we put the Milwaukee up against the DeWalt and the Milwaukee absolutely destroyed it. I mean, it was just a no, comp no competition. It, the, the DeWalt, its chuck broke and it started to smoke and it eventually just stripped out its gears. The, tri the Milwaukee absolutely crushed it, crushed it. So we're gonna find out today <laughs> if the Ryobi does any better than Milwaukee. Let's take a couple a look at the uh, specifics of these two tools here. So here you have it. So very similar in many ways. What we have here are two drills. These are gonna fall into the compact category. These are not the, the baddest, toughest, uh, gnarliest drills that, that of course that either one of the, I think either one of the companies makes. They are the compact. They're gonna be the smaller size, but they're equal in that way. They're both, what, 18 volt lithium batteries. They have very similar amp, was it amp hours or, you know, batteries are, are comparable, but we're, what we're looking at here is kind of the build and the differences in them. So right away we can see, if we listen to them, listen to this. Oops, here's the Ryobi. Here's the Milwaukee. Milwaukee. I do like this tool. I was not a Milwaukee guy um, until I tested this drill against the DeWalt and I have actually been using this day, in my daily stuff. This is the first one I grab. I really like this drill. It is very good quality. The runtime on the battery is not super great, but it's really great for small jobs in tight little areas and I, I just like it. It fits my hand good. It's very ergonomic. It just seems to be a great little tool. So some of the differences I can see right away, of course, we have a plastic chuck versus a metal chuck. We have our clutch, you know, all our drills are gonna have our clutch system. This one goes to what, 20, 24? Well, man, the Milwaukee only goes to 16. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything, you know, of course, they're the same thing for the clutches. We both have two speeds, right? We've got uh, number one and two, our low gear, high gear. We can see that the Milwaukee is a little bit nicer f form factor. It's going to be a little bit more compact. You know, an extra inch there goes a long ways in working with tight areas. Both of these are gonna have, a, uh, they have a light. Yeah, a light. So the Milwaukee's got a light here up on top, which is close to your work area. That's kind of nice. This could actually be better because one problem with these lights is that they do cast a shadow when it's underneath the chuck like this. And I found that when you're over top the drill, which is where you're typically working, it casts a shadow and when you're working under the sink. Sometimes that's hard to, to see and you have to turn the drill a little bit. This one here is angling up. You know, that might be a better system, I don't know. What I really like about this is the battery tester. I can grab it and see, you know, if I, well, I'm gonna take the drill and I don't wanna take the charger, I can really check quickly to see how much charge I have in the battery. That is very much appreciated. We're not gonna have that here in the, in the Ryobi. Uh, we're gonna have a tool holder here. Do we have a tool holder for the Milwaukee? I don't see one unless, is that one in the end there? Is that what that's for? Maybe, I don't know what that's for. I do, like, I do like to have the tool holder to have that bit, that standard. I've used that, I just use it all the time. It's not gimmicky. And we have a magnet here, which is kind of nice, where if you have a bit, you could keep it there. How good is the magnet? Pretty good, that's nice. So if I'm working with a couple bits to be able to throw that down there, that's actually a super nice feature that I've never had on a drill before. But I can tell right now, as long as it's strong enough, I'm gonna like it. One thing that I do like on the Ryobi here is it has a level bubble. And that's kind of nice when you wanna drill horizontal holes that are 
supposed to work. Ooh, it's, it's got like a thick oil in there, so it's really slow. That's actually nice. That's a good idea because the old spirit levels that I have in some of my other drills, the fluid is so, so thin, the alcohol, that the bubble bounces around when the drill's working and it's, you know, the drill is, the bit's jumping around. It's not very useful, but this here, they've kind of dampened it or slowed it down with a thicker material. It's clever. Somebody was thinking right there. Um, apart from that, the battery profiles, you can see, it's got a, this battery is much bigger, but it has, it's a, has, you know, less, it's going to have less power in it by just a little bit. I think this was like 1.5. How do we rate that in the mill? The Ryobi was, what is it? 1.3 amp hours versus 1.5 amp, amp hours. So it's a little bit of a disadvantage there. As far as ergonomics and feel, you know, they both feel pretty good, actually. It feels pretty good. Of course, this one, this one just feels, it feels more, a little more solid, a little more sturdy, a little bit more, maybe a little bit more rigid. No, not really. Battery, the clamp system on this is a two finger pinch, which is fine. I don't mind that. This here, I have not really enjoyed this. This seems a bit awkward. Um, and maybe it's just a, a training issue for me that I haven't gotten used to it, but it, it, I'm always hunting and looking for it. But uh, we've got some rubber on there. It is nice, that keeps it from sliding off of work surfaces. That's really important to me. I had uh, two drills, for example, I was working up on my roof, and I had this one, and I had one that didn't have this rubber on here. And this one, when I would put it on the roof, it didn't go anywhere, because it had all that rubber armoring on there. And the one that didn't, it kept sliding off, and it slid off a couple times and fell on the ground, and the battery fell out, and it didn't do it any good. So having that is really nice. Price point, we're looking at about 100 and I think I paid $111 for this on Amazon. That came with two batteries and a charger. So that's a pretty good value versus the Milwaukee, which was what? Uh, I'll have to annotate the prices, but I think it was around 160 or so. So not a huge price difference, but only got one battery and not, very, not a very big battery. So let's chuck up uh, our torture device and see what happens when we put these against, against each other. So the torture device is nothing very elaborate. It's just simply two two by fours sections there that are bolted to the table, screwed to the table in a way that they will hold the battery uh, from twisting it out of my hand. I tried to hold them <laughs> last time about broke my arm. So I've developed this little two by four system here to assist me. And then we'll connect them together at the chucks with a piece, with a, with a tool bit. And then we'll uh, let them go until one smokes and catches on fire. We might as well just chuck them up with the little bit that came with the Ryobi, right? Get a, we'll get a double test in there. So these are, uh, uh, you know, flat sided here. So once the chucks get a nice bite in there, there's no way for them to slip. So I'll, we'll just go chuck to chuck right here. Make sure I am very curious as to what the results are going to be here. I have to say, I, I don't mind the improving wrong if I have a bias. I'd like to know about it so I can make those corrections, but I have to wonder if a $100 drill can really compete with a $150, $60 drill. All right, are you ready? Here we go. And three, two, one. Oh man. That Ryobi has got so much flex in it, it feels like it's going to break. Well, they've got, both got some sort of a thermal switch in there that cuts off, and so I just keep clicking the trigger to bypass it. Oh, the Ryobi's really twisty. Okay, so let's take a little pressure off there. All right, so let's go to the, the low setting. This is where this is where it usually gets ugly. All right, you ready? So the Milwaukee is overcoming. It has more, a little bit more power. Uh oh, here comes the smoke, and it's not from the Milwaukee. We got the Ryobi, let's change directions. We got the Ryobi smoking. We we'll change directions again. Back and forth. 
Oh, the ram is not working at all now. It is, it's just, it's just, uh, it's died. It smoked a little bit and then it died. Is that it for the Ryobi? Is that all that it had? <laughs> That's good. All right, so let's uh, let's try the second battery, you know, just to give it every possible chance here, right? A fresh battery. It's kind of cheating, but oh, it's back on. Let's go for it. Here we go. Change directions. Oh, here comes the smoke. Let's change directions one more time. Oh, lots more smoke coming out. Oh, hear the popping. Oh, is it gonna catch on fire? Oh, that's not good. Oh, it's not good. The light's blinking. Oh, the light quit working. Uh-oh. Oh, it died again. Oh, look at the smoke coming out. I don't see how we can go any further when it just it quits. So it just at least the at least the Chinese drills they kept going even though they were smoking and burning. Oh, that's very that's very sad, very unsatisfactory. Well, there you have it. The performance of the Ryobi was very unsatisfactory. So I, I, I got, here's the charger. I've got the, both batteries are very, very hot. I put the batteries in there and, oh there, I was getting an error, defective, but it is charging now. So, boy, that just, Filled the whole shop with this acrid smoke from the who knows where. Let's try the other battery, see what happens here. Let's charge these up again, uh, both of them, and we'll try it one more time. See if the, uh, the rivalry will indeed come back to life. And I'm just showing a, a testing mode there. Let's, let's just let this one charge up. At least it was green. All right, guys, we're back at it. All three batteries are charged. Let's see what happens. Uh oh. <laughs> the Milwaukee is eating its lunch. <laughs> Let's switch directions here. <laughs> uh oh, it doesn't sound good for the Ryobi. <laughs> it doesn't like the Milwaukee pushing against it. Just, just die already. You know you want to. Oh, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> hear the plastic gear stripping. Oh, hear that? Oh, boy. Oh, it's only a matter of time now. Oh. It's just about done. Oh, that, oh. Hands are getting tired. <laughs> oh, there's popping. Oh, it's the sparks. It's, it won't let go though, it just won't quit. Oh, that didn't sound good. All right, so <laughs> what did we learn? Well, it's been, uh, I don't know, it's probably been three minutes or so since I, sh I took the batteries out and the Ryobi is still smoking. It's, uh, the handle's just forming. Goodness, that stinks. The uh, Milwaukee was just dripping. You could just feel the plastic gears inside stripping out. It was smoking, it was cracking. I saw little sparks and stuff inside of the Ryobi. It, it just got crushed, it just got crushed. 
both you know both batteries end up running down and I don't think I don't, I, we don't need to go anymore to see that the Milwaukee is a far better drill that Milwaukee now that's this is its second test it did the torture test up against a DeWalt and just ate the DeWalt's lunch ate the Ryobi's lunch and uh, it's still going so man that is one uh, fantastically strong tough durable built drill hasn't once got hot and it hasn't once smoked so we might have to put it up against the Makita. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Uh, and we'll uh, put the Milwaukee against the Kita, Makita and see who comes out on top. But what did we learn? Well, I think we learned that uh, the Ryobi is not a premium brand, which we knew. Not that it won't work, uh, but uh, certainly can't be compared uh, with the durability and toughness of the Milwaukee. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.